National Broadcasting Company presents Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Walk this way, Diamond. If I do, well, I tell my friends. Hey, this is the morgue. Yeah, wise guy. You should feel right at home here, Otis. Oh. Hello, Rick. Hiya, Walt. What goes here? I want you to take a look at someone. You know who this is, Rick? Oh, the poor little devil. He was murdered, huh? Yeah, shot right in the back. Here's another exciting half hour with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Yeah, yeah, you've done something. Uh, how do you do? Are you the manager of this little uh, haven of rest? A boarding house, boarding house. I run it, I run it. I heard you both times. Uh, what do you want, huh? What do you want? Information, information. Your move. You nuts or something, huh? You nuts? I'm looking for a girl. I What's thought... the matter? Read the sign, read the sign. It says rooms for rent. Rooms. Beat it, beat it. You know, if you ever get around to running at 33 and a third, you'll save a lot of breath. Smart guy, real smart guy. No, I got to work. Got to work. Wait I... a minute. Now, wait. Here's $5 if you can tell me about a girl named Elaine Tanner. For 10 bucks, I couldn't tell you a thing. Don't know her. Don't know her. She lived here? So, it's a secret from me. A secret. Now... It... Here, 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 here. Take a look at the snapshot. A man and a girl. Do you know the girl? Mister, I got maybe 10, 20, 30 different people every month. Every month. They come, they go, they pay rent. That's all I care. They pay rent. All right, all right. Did this girl ever pay rent here? Maybe I remember her face. I never remember no names. No names. Is anybody living in her room now? Why, you want to know? Huh? Huh? Well, I'll tell you a secret, But The girl is my sister. When we were little kids, my mother and father ran away from home to become acrobats in a circus. This broke up my sister, and she left too. Now, Mama and Papa are back, and I want the whole stinking family together again so we can take the light out of the window. <laughs> sure. For ten bucks, for ten bucks, maybe I'll show you her room. All right, you're in business. Now, here's your ten. Thanks. The fingers are mine. Uh, this way, down this way. How long does she live here? Oh, not long, not for long, maybe two weeks. Then what? <laughs> then comes an old guy one day. Yeah, an old guy, and... Uh... And what? Well, she goes away with him. And you know what else? Yes, I know what else. The old guy was the same guy in the snapshot I showed you a minute ago. He was with a girl. Sure, sure. Okay, okay, look around, look around. She ain't in any of them drawers, she ain't. Oh, that cupboard, she ain't. She ain't no place. Now, tell me, did she leave anything here at all? Just junk, junk. Newspapers, magazines, newspapers. So she was a bookworm. Now, well, okay, I guess that's it. Let's go. Let's get out of here fast. Who are they shooting at? Who's Who in that they... house next door where the shots came from? People. Thanks. Well, they shooting at you? They shooting at you? No, anybody who wants to get rid of you. Nobody, nobody. Oh, mister, please go now. Now. Look, look. There's 20 bucks more if you do me a favor. I do you one favor and get shot at. Who knows what'll happen for 20, huh? Who knows? Twice as much fun. Now, look, go through the stuff she left here. And... I told you there wasn't nothing, nothing. Well, go through it anyway. If you find anything that might give me a lead, call me up. Here, here's my card. Uh, but, uh, uh, Richard Diamond, private detective. Hey, it says you're a dick. A dick. Strictly private. Now, is it a deal? Twenty bucks now? There'll be more if you find something for me. Okay, okay. No, 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 please beat it. And don't come back here no more. No more. Window glass costs dough. I knew it wouldn't do me any good to look at the house where the shots came from, because whoever played me for a clay pigeon would get out fast. Now, only one person knew I was likely to visit that boarding house, the man who sent me there. And his name was Morris Clinton. Vocation? Multimillionaire. A vacation or hobby? Wolf. And an old one at that. But why should he take a shot at me? Thinking like that figured out to a heart-to-heart -heart talk with Clinton, so I went to see him. But if he knew anything, he played it straight. Shoot at you? But that's ridiculous. Well, I agree. I agree, Clinton. But look at my side of it. This morning, you sent your chauffeur to my office to bring me here. 
Then you hired me to find a girl for you, a girl named Elaine Tanner. And she wasn't there. Right, right, she wasn't there. Just an empty room in a boarding house. That, uh, that's all the information I could give you about her. I'll even buy that. I've worked on less information before, but here's my point, Mr. Clinton. I was shot at. I'm used to it, but I don't like it. I told you, I know nothing about that. Believe me, Mr. Diamond, I know nothing about it. I do believe you. We'll just say someone doesn't like my poking around that boarding house. Have you got any idea who that might be? No, I haven't. I swear it. Hmm. Okay, okay, I'll wrap it up right now. As I said, I've been shot at before, but uh, you've been so pleasant, Mr. Clinton. From here, the price goes up. You, uh, you don't want to go on with the case? Not at these prices. All right, forget it, then. I gave you $100 this morning. Keep it. And forget you ever saw me. Oh, you're so sweet. It'll be a pleasure. Uh, uh, Diamond, just a moment. Yeah? Uh, what has happened is uh, between you and me? Oh, oh, yes, but yes. Oh, I, I will have to report those shots. What? Sure. The police don't like to have people taking pot shots at each other. It makes for confusion in a big city. Uh, wait, Diamond, wait. Something else, Mr. Clinton? I, I, I have my own reasons for not wanting anyone else involved in this. I, I'm sure you and I can come to an agreement. Oh, well, it's just possible, Maury, that you and I may not see wallet to wallet. What, uh, what would you say if, uh, if I offered you a thousand dollars bonus to, to keep on the case? Offer or suggestion? I'll, I'll make it a deal. Put it on paper. A check. Can I trust you? <laughs> uh, okay, Clinton, if you feel that way about it, post-date the check a week from today. If I don't show up with Elaine Tanner by then, the check is yours again, uncashed. Very well. Here you are. Thanks. So long, Mr. Clinton. I'll keep in touch. Where are you going now? Back to my office to wait for a phone call from the little guy at 118 Parker Avenue. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, well, hello there. Did you hear everything you wanted to? I, I beg your pardon, sir. I was just coming and asked Mr. Clinton if I should drive him anywhere this afternoon. Oh? Mr. I'm in here. Right away, Mr. Clinton. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Diamond. Yeah, sure. So long, Christopher. The minute I left Clinton and Chris, I began to get that lousy feeling again. The only thing that made me feel anywhere near normal was the thought of the thousand bucks that would be mine in seven days. For a thousand bucks, I'd stand up for target practice for the big mole. I didn't have much to go on, just the knowledge that old man Clinton wanted me to find Elaine Tanner and that somebody, who up to now had proved to be a bad shot, didn't want me to find her. With that peaceful thought in mind, I sat in my office hoping for a call from the little manager of the boarding house on Parker Avenue. I'd been waiting about an hour, and then... Ah, save your knuckles and use a fire axe. Come on in. Hello, Mr. Diamond. Well... Well, well, Christopher, all your driving finished for the day? Mr. Clinton sent me to see you, Mr. Diamond. Oh, this is the second time today. What's he trying to do, make dear friends of us? Not exactly, Mr. Diamond. Uh, he wants that check back. What? He's changed his mind. Oh, from what I know of him, it needs it. He wants to call off the whole thing. Something happened. Elaine Tanner show up? No. Oh, and he sent you to get the $1,000 check back. That's right, Mr. Diamond. Oh, I know an easier way. Why doesn't he just stop payment on the check? I'm only carrying out Mr. Clinton's orders. Are you? Why do you ask that? That well, seems a little offbeat, Chris. This morning he hires me, then he fires me, then he hires me, now he fires me. Monotonous, isn't it? May I have the check, Mr. Diamond? Not before I call Clinton and ask him a few things. You just don't seem to understand, do you? I want Mr. Clinton to explain. Take your hands away from that phone. Oh, oh, gun. Uh, I know how I hate him. No need to be afraid of this one unless you get stubborn. Let's give Clinton a ring. Keep your hands on top of the desk, palms down. So we're going to play table tilting, maybe? And stay sitting. Listen, Chris. How do you now... like your hair parted, Diamond? On the side or right in the middle? <sighs> When I opened my big blue eyes, my office was dark, and the neon light on the hotel across the street flashed the news that it was dark outside, too. I'd been out cold for a long time. When the room stopped spinning, I reached out, grabbed a piece of it, pulled myself up, went to the water cooler, splashed myself alive. I started toward the light switch when... This time, I was going to be ready. I got behind the door and waited. Hey, what's the idea? Hey, let go! Oh, for the love of Mike Otis, uh, Sergeant Otis. Uh, well, who do you expect, gorgeous George? Maybe oh. let go my neck. Oh, I'm sorry, Otis. I, I, I guess I just can't resist you. You crazy shamus. Hey, it's dark in here. It was a lot darker a couple of minutes ago. Hit the light, will you? Yeah. 
Thanks. Oh, I got enough troubles, and the first thing I see when I wake up is you. Holy mackerel. What you been doing with your head, Diamond? I got mixed up in a handball game. Oh? Yeah, some friends needed a ball. It's hard work, but you get used to it. Oh, got worked over, huh? <laughs> well, them bum jokes you pull catch up with you sometimes. Yeah, I would... Hey, wait a minute. What are you doing here? I come to get you. Lieutenant Levinson wants to see you. Well, go back and describe me. That's all he gets tonight. I think you better come, Shamus. It's important. I think you better go, Otis. That's important. Now, look. Lieutenant Levinson sends me over to get you. There's something he wants to ask you. All I know is name, rank, and serial number. Now, go back and tell Walt I don't want to play games. Yeah, uh, Shamus, I got news for you. Murder ain't a game no more. That's all Otis would tell me, but I didn't like the way he kept looking at me all the way to see Levinson. Then we got to headquarters, not to Walt's office, but down the long marble corridor that led back to other places. He wants me to bring you back here, Diamond. Where to? The morgue. The morgue? Yeah, you heard of it. I heard of it. What's this all about? You'll see. In here, Shamus. Lieutenant! Back here, Otis. Come on, then. Hello, Rick. Nice. Well, how's the other head look? I'll let you know when it speaks to me. Yeah. Meantime, I want you to take a look at someone. In here? Yeah, in here. You know who this is, Rick? Oh, the poor little devil. The poor devil. What do you know about him? Well, he was manager of a boarding house. Cheap walk up on Parker Avenue. That we know. What else? He was murdered, huh? Shot right in the back. Mm. Rick, unless I knew you were tied in, I wouldn't have you here. You want to talk about it? Uh, somewhere else, Walt. Sure. Come on. Before I answer any more questions, Walt, how'd you tie me in? He had one of your business cards in his hand. He was shot while he was standing at the phone in the hallway of that boarding house. Did he call you, Rick? I didn't get a call from him. Got any idea why he wanted you? Maybe, maybe not. All depends. On what? Walt, listen. I will in my office. Wait outside, Otis. And I'm busy. Get it? Sure. Sure, I get it. Wait a second, Rick. Now, here's a gun. 38 police special. Take a good look at it. I've seen it before. It's mine. How did you get it? The ballistic support says this gun killed the little guy back there. Did you check it for fingerprints? Yeah, and they were all yours. Hmm. Will you have Otis come visit me and bake a cake with a file in it? Oh, cut it out, Rick. I know you didn't kill him, but I've got to tell the commissioner something. He's funny that way. I was in my office when the guy was shot. I was out cold. You got any proof? For you or the commissioner? For the commissioner, you egghead. Uh, listen on the way. To where? Have Otis bring the car around front. We're going to make a call on a guy named Morris Clinton and his errand boy, Christopher. On the way out, I told Walt the whole thing, how Christopher caught me off base, put me out, and then must have taken my gun to kill the little manager. But neither of us could come up with an answer to why. Why murder to keep me from finding Elaine Tanner? What was the connection between Clinton, his chauffeur, and the girl? I thought maybe Clinton would give her the answers when he learned there was a murder tapping at his door. So you want to see Christopher, Lieutenant Levison? If you don't mind, Mr. Clinton. Oh, no, no, that's all. Uh, <clears throat> I'll call him real loud, Mr. Clinton. Of course. Christopher? Christopher! You're sure he's here, Mr. Clinton? Oh, yes, yes, I am, of course, Lieutenant. Call again. <clears throat> Christopher! Christopher! I don't think he'll hear you. Why not? I'm not deaf, Mr. Diamond. Hmm? Rick, is that Christopher? Yeah, yeah, this is Chris, all right. And I owe him a haircut. Now, lay off, Rick. I'll handle this. Christopher. Yes, sir? Where were you about two this afternoon? Why, right here, working on the car. Correction. Working on me. I beg your pardon. Oh, come on, come on. Let's have it straight. Mr. Clinton, what about this? Uh, Christopher is, is right, Lieutenant. Yes, <clears throat> he's right. Oh, you're scared stiff, Clinton, and you're lying. I'm not. I, uh, I wanted to go into town to, to keep an appointment. And the fuel pump on the car was stopped up. I had to take it apart. Oh, uh, sure. And while you fixed it, Clinton stood right over you. As a matter of fact, he did watch. And it took all afternoon to fix it. No, but when it was finished, it was too late for Mr. Clinton's appointment. Uh, he decided not to go. How about that, Mr. Clinton? Oh, yes, yes, Lieutenant. Uh, Christopher, uh, Christopher hasn't been out of my sight all afternoon. That's good enough for me. All right, Diamond, let's go. What? Are you crazy? No, that's why I'm putting the cuffs on you. I thought there was something fishy about your story. Gun taken away from you. People coming to see you, hiring you, firing Walt, you. Walt, your stomach has gone to your head. Never mind my stomach. Otis. Uh, yeah, Lieutenant. Put the cuffs on this shamas. Cuffs? 
On him? Close your mouth, Otis. Put the cops on. Walt, what in the world? Diamond, I've been waiting for a chance like this to comb you out of my hair for good. Otis, the cops. Uh, yes, sir, Lieutenant. All right, Shamus, hold him out. Mr. Clinton, thank you very much. Goodbye. Come on, Diamond. No. Uh, uh, Lieutenant. Otis, I told you to close your mouth. Oh, I gotta breathe. Oh, shut up and come on. Walt, outside, Diamond. Get going. You big bubblehead. What's the idea of making like a cop with me? I kind of liked it. How'd I do? What? Good performance, eh? Good (laughs) performance. Oh, you big ham. You great big ham. Well, Lieutenant, are we going to put the shamus in the jug? Shut up, Otis. Take the cups off him. What? Here, Otis. Start working. Oh, you're right, Rick. Clinton was scared stiff. And for some reason, he backed Christopher's alibi. Well, I've, uh, I've got an idea. You better have. If I don't have something to tell the commissioner, I'll have to give up my ideas about a pension. I, uh, I'm going back to that boarding house. Why? Well, the manager was going to call me. It's just possible he got a hold of a lead on Elaine Tanner, but Christopher killed him before he had a chance to tell me. Well, that makes sense. Uh, have you got a man there? Yeah, a half. Oh, good. Well, I'll see you later. Rick. All right. Please. For the sake of my stomach, don't slip up. You're my only suspect without an alibi. Thanks, Walt. See you later. Yeah. No, oh, Walt. What? Bottoms up on the bicarbonate. <laughs> It's all the stuff there was in the basement, Diamond. Oh, thanks, Mahaffey. Mm. Everything neatly bundled but this one pile. The little guy must have gone through it. Got any idea what you're looking for? No, give me a hand, will you? Sure. Hmm. Newspapers, magazines. Oh, Mahaffey. Uh-huh? No one's been in here since the murder? Nobody. I've been on the door. Oh, and the manager had nothing on him? Only your card. That's funny, very funny. He wouldn't have tried to call me if he hadn't found something. Maybe he came across something in this pile of stuff. Didn't take it out and then... Find something? Yeah, yeah. This sheaf of withholding tax statements. Mm-hmm. The kind that come on the bottom of paycheck. Made out to Elaine Tanner, paid by the Blue Falcon nightclub. That ain't far from here. That's where I'm going. Yeah, sure. Now I remember a kid that named Tanner. Yeah, used to work here in the line. Thanks, bartender. Where's she now? Well, Mr. Me, I know from nothing about her, but she was good friends with one of the dolls in the line, gal named Gladys. Where can I find this Gladys? Dressing room, straight back, turn left. And knock on the door, huh? Well, for oh, they dress that way for the show anyway. I'll keep both eyes closed. <laughs> sure, straight back like I said, and first turn left. <laughs> What you want with her, handsome? Why don't you get off here? You tip me, sweetheart, but give me a rain check. Who waits for rain? But, um, why do you want to see Elaine? Well, maybe I want to tell her about some oil wells that came in. Yeah? <laughs> you don't look like the type talks about oil wells. Honey, honey, don't have the tassels on my shoes, fool you. Oh, you're cute. <laughs> yeah, I know where Elaine is. Want to give? Information? Sure. Oh, you've got a one-track mind. Maybe I can't switch it over yet. Okay, so I'll get a couple of days older meanwhile. Anyhow, I never did like her. So, I don't mind letting you know. No what, Gladys? Well, maybe a month ago she quits this job. This dump. Uh, all right, she quits. Go ahead. Yeah. But uh, before she quits, she's acting funny. Like the night we're going home together, walking along. And she's talking. Oh, this is the last time I take this walk. So, going to fly to him from work? I'm quitting. Well, if you like to eat grass, go ahead. <laughs> I won't eat grass. Ever had a real mink coat, Gladys? I could have, but his lawyer's settled out of court. I'll have one. I'll do all right. You thinking about that guy Clinton who comes in the club? Uh Uh-huh. Honey, there's wolves and there's wolves. Want to pick one with teeth? He likes me. Sure. Every time he sees you, he's got to push his eyes back in his head. Chris is working for him. His chauffeur. So this is news, so what? Money. Lots of it. Shake down? Oh, now look, honey, they can give you trouble for that. <laughs> Not a shakedown. This is safe and sure. Chris figured it. He figured it and I... And what? Nothing. Just forget it. Come on, let's get some coffee. And that's all she says. Uh-huh. Now, where can I find her? Oh, I'll tell you where I think she is. Here's the address. I wrote it down. Thanks, Gladys. I'll see you again. Yes. Yeah. See more of me. Is that possible? 
This costume's for the first show. We save up for the second. I'll be here for the last show. Oh, what you said. So long, Hampton. A little while after Gladys gave the address, I was buzzing at an apartment door. I kept my fingers crossed and then uncrossed them when the door opened. Yes? Hello there, Elaine. Who are you? Well, the name's Hangtooth, Elmer Hangtooth. Who? Oh, I better come in. Hey, hey, what's the idea? Oh, can't hear a thing you say, honey. My hearing aid just shorted out. Now listen, wise guy. Oh, Elaine, Elaine. Chris sent me. Chris? Yeah. He said to tell you everything's okay. The heat's off. How about that private eye? Diamond? Richard Diamond? Yeah, that's the one. Honey, you'll never be any closer to him than you are right now. Uh, I was afraid he'd quit. Hey, when's Chris coming? Soon, I hope. Oh. Uh, I've never seen you before, have I? Well, you're young and life's full of surprises. Uh-huh. I like surprises. Nice. Chris work you in on the deal? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did him a favor. Took care of Diamond. Like doing it, too. Mm. Oh, by the way, what goes with you and Clinton? <laughs> Honey, we had a common interest. Oh. Books, dearie, books. Hmm. He had one I wanted. <laughs> when I finished with him, I could have walked out with the furniture. Yeah, I guess you could, baby. I guess you could. Think so? Why not? Uh, what did you say your name was? Well, the name's Applenocker, Harold Applenocker. Well, that's not what you said before. Oh, so you have been listening. The real name is Diamond, Richard Diamond. <laughs> I see a kidder, huh? Well, if that makes you laugh, this ought to bring back Mahjong. Here, take a look at my license. Huh? My membership card, the Hopalong Cassidy Club, my Flash Gordon beanie. You dirty shamus, you stinking cop. Easy, baby. Let go, Easy, baby. Easy. Let go, you dirty... Easy. Let go of me. Let her go, Simon. Chris! Chris! Jackpot. Chris and Elaine all at once. Simon, get your hands off her. Get them off. No, that's better. Huh? Now, Elaine, before I fill him full of holes, huh? tell me what he's doing here. He, he said you sent him, Chris. Sure, he would. Elaine, you ready to get out of here? Yeah. Okay, hand me a cushion from the sofa. Okay. Want to take a nap, Chris? I'll laugh at your funeral, Shamus. Hold a cushion over the gun. Nobody hears the shot. Better not, Chris. Elaine, start out. I'll be right behind you. Yeah, all right, Chris. Got the book? Yeah. What book? Shut up. Get going, Elaine. Chris, uh, let's talk this over. Funny, you just finished talking, Diamond. Chris! Elaine, what's going on? Give me my book. Give me to me! Clinton! Clinton, duck. Get out of the way. Diamond, you. Get... Ah! Oh, Chris. Well, I, I owed him that partner's hair. Chris. All right, Elaine. Just creased. I wouldn't think of depriving the hot seat of such a good customer. My book. Where's my book? I want it. Give me my book. Give sure, me... sure, sure, Mr. Clinton. But I'm afraid you'll have to explain to the police first. A telephone call to the 5th Precinct brought Walt and Otis to my rescue. Otis used the siren. Loved it. I told Walt the book old man Clinton kept screaming about had me a little confused that I wouldn't be able to relax until he found out just where it fitted in the case. He promised to find out the answers as soon as he took Chris, Elaine, and Clinton back to the 5th Precinct. I told him to call me at Helen's. Rick, what about that check for $1,000? Is it any good? Well, the check's post-dated. I doubt if Mr. Clinton will honor it now. It's too bad. We, we could have celebrated. So all you got for your trouble was 100 a day in expenses. Mm, I'll get it. Grant's tomb, the general speaking. Rick? Yeah, Walt? Yeah, you sitting down? Why? You can tear up that check Clinton gave you. He won't honor it. He's mad about having to go to jail. Oh, I was way ahead of you about the check. Why did Clinton go to jail? What did he do? You know that book he was yelling about? What about it? Well, it's an original Sir Francis Bacon manuscript. How would you know? I hate to admit it, but Otis told me what it was. You know, Otis is a... a, bibli, a bib, uh, excuse me, Lieutenant. It's bibliophile. Shut up, Hammerhead. Okay, so I work for nothing. Uh, Rick. Yeah? The book is worth $30,000. It was stolen 18 years ago from the Fine Arts Library in Washington. Old man Clinton bought it from a fence. That's why he couldn't go to the police. Oh, so Chris and Elaine uh, hijacked it, huh? Probably had a sale for it. Yeah, uh, Rick. There's a $1,500 reward for that book. So what? It's yours. Hmm? Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Walt. Helen. Hmm? Put your ear next to the receiver. Oh, all right. Walt, say that again. Say what again? What you just said. Did I say anything? Well, sure you did. Are you sure? Oh, now cut it out, Walt. Say it again about the reward. Oh, that. There's a $1,500 reward for the book. Thanks, Walt. Bye. Bye. Well, baby. Well, we're going to celebrate after all. $1,500. Oh, Rick, that calls for a real celebration. Sure. Well, don't go away, darling. I'll be right back. I won't be long. 
Oh, uh, Rick, there's a new song on the piano. Why don't you try it? Okay, uh, I set my pajamas and put on my prayers. Well, that's pretty silly, but... Hmm. My baby kissed me goodnight And I am glad to relate That by the time I got home I was feeling great I climbed up the door and opened the stairs I said my pajamas and put on my prayers I turned off the bed, crawled into the light And all because you kissed me goodnight Next morning I awoke and scrambled my shoes I shined up an egg, then I toasted the news I buttered my tie and took another bite And all because you kissed me Good night. By evening I felt normal, so we went out again. You said good night and kissed me. I hurried home and then I climbed up the door and opened the stairs. I said my pajamas and put on my prayers. I turned off the bed, crawled into the light, and all because you kissed me. Good night. By evening I felt normal, so we went out again. You said good night and kissed me. I hurried home and then I lifted the preacher, called up the phone, spoke to the dog and threw your maw a bone. It was midnight and yet the sun was shining bright and I'll be called you kissed me. Good night. Oh, that was lovely, Rick. Well, how do I look? Oh, my, my, wonderful. What are you so dressed up for? For the celebration. Oh, that's right, yeah. Come on, let's go. Oh, where are we going, Rick? Oh, the Blue Falcon nightclub. We'll be just in time for the last show. The Blue Falcon? Oh, but why pick that place? Oh, but they've got a wonderful floor show. Yes, but the costumes are... Oh, they're nothing. Oh, what you said. <laughs> You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Ed Begley played Lieutenant Walt Levinson. Also in the cast were Wilms Herbert, Francis Robinson, Ted Osborne, Gene Bates, and Paul Dubov. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Today's show was written and directed by Russell Hughes. Dick Powell currently may be seen in the motion picture version of the best-selling novel, Mrs. Mike. This is Eddie King inviting you to be with us next Sunday at this same time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. (laughs) 